I didn't, uh, I only became that, you know, aware of that since I became an Orthodox Jew. But the arguments that are put forth were, that, that uh, Rabbi Halevi puts forth, um, were self-evident to me, if you will, the... the uh, even in your teens and your twenties, yeah, I didn't have, I didn't know that, I didn't have the scholarly uh, knowledge, but I did understand um, that. Uh, let's let's weigh these two issues here. Uh, Moses, the five books of Moses, even Christian theology would say were written by Moses. They're sort of modernists that would come along and say it's written by this scribe or that scribe, and they give them a, a name like M or L or. And so I, yeah, exactly. Giving the the, uh, and I was exposed to that even academically at Andover. I took classes on the subject, and uh, but it was quite evident that you're saying uh, in simple the five book you have the story. You simply have the weight of the story of the of creation, and the miracles of uh, of the Jews uh, leaving Egypt, and. Uh, up to the time of Yahashua, the death of Moses, and you have this extraordinary massive volume, and then you have the book which was not written by Jesus himself, uh, and you hold up the volume, I, I have a, in my bag, I always carry a, a humash, uh, but let's just take any humash. Uh, it, uh, here's a Christian Bible. Well, I mean, you're talking about the New Testament. Yeah, right? but this is the this sorry, is the, it's like the King dusty. James version. No, it, it's, just uh, the Christian Bible. Sorry, let me. It, no, it's got okay. the the Tanakh as well. But okay, so people the, don't realize that the New Testament is like you know very small. Yeah. compared to the Tanakh. Uh, yeah, quite simply speaking, that's the uh, that's the the issue. You you look at um, the five books of Moses and the Tanakh, and you hold up a book like that, and right. the same size print. All things being equal, the New Testament right, it right. doesn't even rate the size and dimensions of a Marvel comic book by yeah. comparison. Well, yeah. And but the volume that wouldn't be determinative uh, in and of itself. So no, no, obviously, no, no, one could have superior quality uh, and be smaller. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, it um, it's the weight of it. It's simply reading one against the other, and you're one is. Let me show yeah. my my viewers. Okay, so on the right, that's the. Now it's on my left, so the viewer's right. That's the New Testament there, and that's the Old Testament of the Tanakh there. And it includes the Tanakh? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Right. Um, in any case, the, uh, the point of speech for itself. And, uh, but how did you relate? I mean, didn't you, as a kid, um, you, you were taught that the only way to God was through Jesus, was through Christ, and... Now, here were your friends who are Jewish who didn't believe in Jesus. How did you deal with that, you know, in your teens and your, your 20s, in your head? Well, again, it comes back to one's parents. I, I, I do suspect uh, that, uh, you know, we're, you know, it was ordained by God who our parents were, of course, and, and what they would teach us. Uh, it was very easily, I got the message from Christianity, uh, to its credit, that the important thing was being okay with God, and that there were, um, so that's the message I took, and it didn't seem at all uh, troublesome, uh, where the, as one even learns from Christianity, the reasons, if you will, from my perspective, not to accept it as Give the expression gospel. Uh, one learns from it that he himself did not re write any books, uh, that the eyewitnesses to the crucifixion, uh, are, there, none of the people who would have been alive to tell about it were the ones who wrote about it. And you have the, the simple uh, message that everything that happens in Judaism is witnessed by uh, countless um, uh, thousands of people. And uh, in, the, in the case of the um, Ahmad Harsanai, uh, millions, uh, versus uh, certain uh, absurdities that would appear to be placed there deliberately. Uh, there's a book by Rabbi Klein called, it's a series of books you might be familiar with called Permission to Believe and yeah. Permission to Receive, and I can't see how anyone could document it better 
the arguments without being in any way disparaging of Christianity, uh, there's plenty of reasons, intellectual reasons, to believe what one believes in Judaism. But I'm more interested in where you were at before you read Rabbi Klein or before. Oh you yeah, this, I just, that was only something I read because my son who's I have a son right, right, right. But in when you were in, in Israel your and he teens said, in your twenties, you know, you 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 had not yet been exposed to Jewish uh, text, I assume Jewish teachings. But. No, no explanations at all uh, right. uh, that come from Judaism. Just mm -hmm. straight Christian theology, mm -hmm. and the King James translation of the Bible right. from Genesis right. on. And uh, let me just say that my knowledge of that and my interest in God was such that I read them diligently and studied what was offered me to study and took it upon myself to know Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John as well, and, and just an awareness of God. Uh, let me look at it and see it in this light. And finally, the only thing that answered my uh, concerns. I wouldn't say I was troubled by it. I was not at all troubled. I think what you're asking is, was I troubled by this disparity? Yeah, between you, what my see religious... your friends were Jews, and yet your yeah. religion... No, and my, we never discussed, my Jewish was... friends and I very rarely, if ever, discussed religion. Um, so I was just aware of who, one had, who I had an affinity for. This is a retroactive evaluation. Did you discuss with your pastors or your Christian parents or Christians that you knew well hey, you know, my friends who are, who are Jews, you know, are they going to get to heaven, or did you...? No, it didn't concern me. Uh, it's not something that troubled me, it's not that kind of thought that struck me. It's simply, what had intellectual weight, what makes sense to me, and what didn't. And uh, so... Uh, Were you going to church regularly in your 20s? No, no, because I fell away from that, uh, and my family did. They fell away from Christianity itself. Again, there's a subliminal message there, isn't there? When did you yeah. fall away? I don't know. I, when my parents certainly divorced, there's, there was no fall. longer part okay. of family life okay. at that point, and I was already away at boarding school. Right, right. And uh, so one is shaped more by the exterior world at that. And, and, uh, and I don't ever remember having a serious discussion with my father about religion um, until he was very ill and towards the last part of his life mm -hmm. and uh, and I was very I just asked him do you have uh, what's your point of view and I was very surprised to hear that he had a, actually a very straight ahead orthodox Christian view of life and death and God and reward and punishment and heaven and hell if you will and I was surprised and, of course, impressed in some... Uh, when did you have this you know. discussion with him? Oh, he, he died, uh, I don't want to get the, the years correct, but let's say I was uh, in my mid-30s when he died, and, uh, and he, uh, so this was in the last, uh, like six, last six months of his, yeah, then the last six months of his, of his life. Yeah. Yeah. And you got married in 1976? To uh, if you follow the timeline, you're talking to my. I've been married twice, okay. so to my. You, you first got married in '76. That's right. Yeah. yeah. To the and I have two sons. My two oldest sons are with uh, my first wife. And how long were you married for? I think till the marriage was ended formally, about ten years. Ten years. Yeah. yeah. Maybe oh. a little less. Maybe right. I'd say maybe eight. Yeah. And then when did you get married the second time? About six years after that, I want to say, five to six years. Are you still married? I'm still married, yeah. yes. So, okay, so you've been married about 15 years, the second marriage? Second marriage, um, well, there's a, I have to hope she doesn't see this so that I don't know, but I think it's uh, 18, it may be 19 years. 19 19 years. years. So how did you become interested in Judaism? Uh, a phenomenon happened in my between the ages of 35 and 40. Um, I was I was suddenly able to read much much faster than I had ever been able to read before, and I had done nothing to aspire to that. And I would read voraciously, and I had had a good uh, liberal arts education, and uh, I considered it my business as an actor to know as far as my understanding was then, everything about everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, I had finally reread, you know, uh, 
uh, Shakespeare, uh, we're talking about rereading, 